in your own words, what would you say, how would you answer someone who, who, would, who would push back and say, well, I trained at a chiropractic college or I trained in a physical therapy context. Why is that not adequate for me? Uh, why do I need to, to pursue this, uh, this idea of a primary spine provider? I've uh, encountered that, <laughs> that um, pushback and you know, I would love to say that chiropractic training uh, uh, provides practitioners with everything they need to know uh, and all the skills and knowledge they, that they need to function as primary spine practitioners. Um, that's not the case. I would like to think that someday uh, chiro chiropractic um, uh, institutions will get there, but we're not there now and we're not be going to be there anytime soon. And so I think that the sooner we uh, embrace that and accept that, um, the, the sooner we can just take the next step and that is gain the knowledge and skills that are needed to really function as a primary spine practitioner in the highest quality level uh, possible. Mm. Well, I think, you, you know, there's a there's almost, there can be at least uh, a, an arrogance of, well, I've got my master's level training now, you know, um, and, and that, that can be initially, it's, it's sort of like the, 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 the middle school, the, the, the person who gets to the end of middle school and they say, well, you know, now they've made it. Now mm -hmm. they're going into, into uh, what is the, the final stage of your high school? High school. Yeah, yeah. high school. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's that kind of thing. And, yes. and for, for myself, I've now been in practice for coming up to seven years. Initially, there was a, a level of confidence, but as soon as you get into the, into the real world of helping patients on the ground, where the rubber meets the road, it, it's, it's a significantly different. Yes. You've got this hodgepodge, this melting pot of, of knowledge and skill, which is not yet formed into a, a, a really a kind of a, a usable system mm -hmm. yes. that you can apply to patients and then use to communicate with their whole care team, their community, their family. Yes. Um, and you know, I, I experienced myself when I got out of chiropractic school and I went out to, into the to, to the real world of, of, um, of, of clinical care, uh, finding out that, well, I didn't learn everything I needed to know in chiropractic school and I needed to take it upon myself to add to the, my, my knowledge and skills. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was very frustrating at first. Uh, so I'm, I understand the pushback that I frequently get because it can be frustrating. But you know, now my, my primary um, uh, um, education, my, the, the, the teaching that I do in addition to uh, primary spine practitioner training is at the medical school here at, uh, at Brown University. Mm -hmm. And so I, I came to realize that, you know, that's not uni unique to chiropractors. Uh, when I speak to uh, fourth year medical students who are graduating medical school, I uh, am, am uh, uh, keenly aware that they're not ready for private practice, just right. go out there and start seeing patients, but nobody expects them to be ready because they're, they're beginning their training. They go on to do internships and residencies. They add to their uh, basic um, knowledge and skill that they mm -hmm. learned in medical school to then prepare them to be able to, to uh, function in the real uh, clinical world. And so it's really not um, uh, limited to, to chiropractors. It's just that in, in medicine, it's nobody would expect a, a medical a medical uh, doctor graduating medical school to go out there and start practicing. Yeah, absolutely. They're provided with additional training. Yeah. And so that's what we're doing for uh, the chiropractors, providing them with additional training to, to function as a primary spine practitioner, which functioning as a primary spine practitioner may not be everybody who graduated chiropractic school. They may uh, want to go into one direction or another. Sports or pediatrics. Or exactly. Yeah. So, but there's one opp opportunity that is, is um, an expanding opportunity in, in, in uh, the, the healthcare systems, the various healthcare systems around the world, the, uh, there's a need for a primary level primary spine practitioner who can provide upfront care for patients with spine problems. And currently there's nobody available uh, that can provide that. So what we're creating by, by uh, establishing this primary spine practitioner, um, practitioner type is uh, fulfilling a need in the, in the uh, healthcare system for this kind of practitioner. And the, the gap is interesting because you've had the primary care physicians here dealing with the general issues. 
and, and many times there will be musculoskeletal that will fall into that. But then you've got the specialists who are, have typically been hospital-based and hospital-dominant. Um, and and this, this no man's land is where the primary spine practitioner falls into, isn't mm -hmm. it? Yes. Um, right. Getting back to the, the topic of, of what is inadequate with the skill set from a chiropractic education point of view, I think perhaps one could say that, you know, the, um, the, the model of evidence-based care is based on those three rings. So you've got, uh, you've got the clinical knowledge and the evidence. You've got the patient expectations and the patient desires. And then you've got the clinical experience of the, of the practitioner. What is interesting, and this is what Dr. John Ventura has pointed out, is the importance of, of the seven touch principle of learning. And that's where the, the PSP course through Pittsburgh and through the Spine Cloud platform, as well as all of essentially what we're going to be bringing out from a, a mentorship point of view, the, the online digital roundtables, it's aimed at, at helping us touch these concepts seven times. It's essentially the number of completeness, bringing us to, to a full acquaintance with all of the skills and knowledge necessary to deliver best care for our patients. Yes. So plug in on spinecloud.org, sign up as a free member, and we'll uh, get Dr. Murphy on, and we'll have some roundtables, and uh, you'll be able to interact with a wider audience. It's been good to have you, Dr. Murphy. Thanks for welping, welcoming us in here. Yeah, thanks for uh, Good you. to see your space. Yes. And I hope I can get an adjustment now. Um, <laughs> the, the, there's one last question that I have to ask, and this is an interesting one as a, as a tourist. I see there are Dunkin' Donuts everywhere. Mm. So I have, to, I have to ask, what role has Dunkin' Donuts played in the problem of spine in America? Ah, <laughs> where do I get started? <laughs> well, you know, the, 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 it, the uh, Dunkin' Donuts is, is based in, in uh, Massachusetts, <laughs> and uh, it sells tea and, and coffee, so uh, I, I, can, I can encourage that, but the, the donuts and the, uh, the muffins and all that stuff, I have a little bit of a problem yeah, with exactly. that part. <laughs> you, you've obviously got, uh, you know, sugar-free uh, kitchen here and all yes. of that. <laughs> well, thanks for having okay, us. Okay, thank you.